and welcome back to Retrospect My Fantasy, where we are currently taking a look at the Final Fantasy franchise from beginning to end, and we're currently working on number 12. So, before we really get going, got a couple things we need to talk about. Announcement number uno is that, well, as you can see, I've made a small change in our, in our layout, um courtesy of Streamlabs, uh, which I just switched over to, so I'm testing that. I have to get used to it and figure out all the intricacies, so there may be more changes to come uh, in terms of how the layout and everything works, as well as like my bots and whatnot. Uh, announcement number two is that we are at 46. We're at 92% of that 50 follower goal. We're so close, you guys. We are so close. If you happen to know anybody that might be interested in watching what we're doing here with the Final Fantasy franchise or I don't know, the uh, Diablo or Assassin's Creed or anything like that, let them know. Bring them in. I'll try and keep them here. I'll, I'll do my best anyway. Um... Because once we reach that goal of 50 followers, we're going to have ourselves a bonus stream and giveaway where I'm going to be playing Telltale's The Walking Dead and New Frontier, giving away a copy of said game along with a copy of Psychonauts and three $20 Steam gift cards. So, bring people in. The sooner we get to that 50, the sooner we reach that uh, giveaway. Uh, announcement number three is that we very recently partnered with Humble. Uh, and as of today, there is a new Humble sale that I want to talk about because I'm definitely going to be using it, and that is an Ubisoft sale. Uh, I'm going to be using that to pick up uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 different Assassin's Creed games, assuming they have them all there. However many are there, as along with a bunch of the Far Cry games. So, if you are interested in picking any of those up, please use my affiliate link there that you can see on this in chat. And that will not only get you to the store, but it will also uh, brain fart. There we go. Uh, so. Not only will that link get you directly to Humble, but if when you're using that link, you not only do you get yourself that awesome game that you want, and you support charity because you bought it through Humble, but you also help support the channel. And all the proceeds from that or the tips or when we eventually get subscri subscribers or even bits, uh, all the proceeds go towards improving this, improving our look, getting... Better equipment, better lighting. So, any support is greatly appreciated. Um, now, last time in Final Fantasy XII, we... God, what happened on Friday? That was a long stream. Um, we were captured. Or so we thought. We were the Mar the Marquis of Brugerba turned us in so that we could break free and rescue Princess Ash. Upon doing so, we then had to fight Vent Venser because he kind of turned on us. He thought he was doing the right thing, but he was being a total jackal. Um... So, we had to beat the crap out of him, and did so. Um, and then we made our way back to Bujerba and talked to the Marquis, who informed us that he can't really openly support what we're doing, because if that found out, if, if the Empire found out, then they might bring down a significant force onto Bergerba, and he, understandably, can't risk that. 
Uh, but he will, you know, support us from afar. And once we have sufficiently changed things, he might very well support us openly. Um, did you find the treasure of the sand sea? Just where is he going, Kupo? That's a very good question. We need to track that guy down. He has our reward. Um, we then made our way to... Oh, he also told us not to go anywhere. At least the princess couldn't go anywhere. So the princess was going to steal the straw. Um, pretty much everyone figured out that she was going to do that. So we kidnapped her. Um, and made our way back to Rabinaster. Meanwhile, we found out that the Council Kupo Gathering of Urita and Yensa, a truly rare occurrence, Kupo, uh, we found out that the Emperor is no longer backing his son, because his son is doing all sorts of weird, shady stuff. Kupo, Kupo? Wait, what's happening, Kupo? Wait, no, they're going to execute him. Hey, man, that might be part of their ritual. You don't know. Don't do this. The creature would still be at large if it weren't for his plea of help, Kupo. You shame us by seeking aid outside of the tribe. Rita and Yensa are lords and masters of the great sea. We seek the aid of none. Ooh. Hey. If it... Your words are the howling of the sand to my ears. I condemn you to dust. <gasps> what? What have you done, Kupo? You bring him back. Those who sully our name will be punished, be they foemen or kin. They must pay the honor price. There can be no forgiveness. Damn. I would destroy you, too. But I am merciful. Better you live to tell the world that the Uritan are not to be taken lightly. Now leave. All right. Well. A bunch of ex exerberries. The rogue Uritan. He wouldn't have been happy back with his clan. I'm sure of it, Kupo. That's alright. We, uh... We already harvested the plant. That flower. It's rare to see a blooming in the sensi, Kupo. Maybe the treasure he found was this. Uh, there's a particular dangerous avian known as a Gruda. That's said to be quite unfond of this flower scent, Kupo. A treasure indeed. Interesting. So I'm guessing that if we had had these on our way into the uh, old emperor's tomb, we either would have had some sort of advantage or maybe it wouldn't have been attacked at all. Or I don't know. I don't think I've ever gotten that before going in there, so if you know, tell me. It'd be interesting to find out. Uh, and then we were given a task to go into, um, hey, look at that, Van's back. Uh, to go into the uh, Giza Plains, but they're flooding right now, so I decided that we should do a little bit of grinding, because I know that the flooded uh, Giza Plains are pretty rough, so we've done some exploring um, along singular paths, 
haven't really haven't opened anything up really or at all I don't think uh, we did a little bit of exploring into the those caves that have really tough enemies and uh, they've got really tough enemies I forgot just how tough they were I mean I remember they were hard, remembered that they were difficult but man just the, just the first enemies we were seeing were kicking our ass enough that we were we had to take them one at a time and be very deliberate with our fights uh, fortunately, we succeeded enough. We gained a few levels. Um, well, I... Did we gain levels? Yeah, we gained a few levels. Mostly what we gained, though, was a lot of LP. Uh, and once we get through this area and get back on track, I will show you just how much LP we've gained. So, we need to go... Just continuing. That direction. Whatever that dire that direction is. Because the, the maps are all relative. Or, yeah. Actually, no, they're not relative. They're static. Which is good, because if they are relative, that could be very disorienting. There we go. I hate how... Heavy-handed this is. It is far more distracting than the overlaid map in Diablo or Diablo uh, 2 or 3. But, you know, it was Square's first attempt at an overlay map, so gotta give him a little, of a, bri a little bit of a break, right? Get him. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry about that. Ooh, hey, look at that guy. We really don't want to fight anywhere near him. Do you guys remember what happened last time we fought one of those things by accident? And by fought it, I mean it fought us? <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. It fought us. I don't even think we were really able to hurt it. Oh, These guys are so cute. And we murdered them so easily. Really? Come on, guys. Get him. Man, we really need better arrows. We've, we've already picked up slightly better ammo for uh, our gun. We have uh, sleep ammo now. No, silent ammo. So, slightly better ammo, but our quivers are... Still not doing that great. Oh well. You know how it is. Oh, hey, yeah. That's a... There's a thing I can use. This guy. Right here. Fast forward. Or double speed, rather. Fast forward makes it uh, sound a lot more um, scripted. As if I just like recorded something and are playing it at an increased rate. Which I would never do. Why? Why would I ever do anything like that? <laughs> But no, I would never do that. The only time there will ever be pre-recorded video is when we do our synopsis of each series. And that's just 
so that there will be something more than my ugly mug on the screen. Almost there. We can almost call it good. Forever. Nope. No more Final Fantasy games. They're all done. We beat... We beat this area. That's it. That's all we need to know. Uh, so I was actually talking to somebody that I work with um, about my stream. And... They... I, you know, asked what games I play on the stream. I was like, well, right now we're touching on Final Fantasy. He's like, oh... Really? Final Fantasy? But that's not a... These games aren't very good. And I just stopped and looked at him. I was like, what? Like, well, I mean... I've only I've only played 13, but that was really bad. And then I laughed and... Patted him on the shoulder and... Definitely, probably gave him a condescending smile like, oh... You need to grow up. Hey, Jack Daniels. Thank you for the follow. I greatly appreciate it. That puts us one step close to you guys to that goal of 50 followers. Alright. Got a lot of succulent fruits. But I'm sure I had a condescending smile. I mean, I didn't really mean to be condescending, but... I, I'm sure I was. It was definitely one of those situations that... It would be easy to be condescending in. Um, so first off, let us take a look at our license board. So yeah, we've picked up quite a few licenses licenses since the last episode. Okay, so that's just more awesome weapons. No, I'm not. I'm, uh, I, well, what I was farming was just LP and getting a massive chain off of the, uh, the Yurten Yensa no, that, yeah, you're a Tenyensa, but, you know, there's only so far you can really take that. <laughs> Ooh, Bosh, it's so good. Lady Ash, I really don't know what to do with you. I mean, I gave you a spear. I put you in spear that way. If by chance we happen to get a, uh, a Zodiac, you would be well, well equipped. But man, I just don't really know what to do with her. She's not... She's not as good as everyone else. Uh, and I'm not just talking, like, level-wise, but... Her abilities... Just aren't as good as other characters' abilities. That's just straight up. Oh! So here's something I need to talk about. That we didn't touch on last episode. So... As you're completing boards, and you get close to the end of a board, you can buy this... This, right here. Second board. Or third board, or whatever. I'm sure it goes up with each one. There's no change to this. There, there's nothing here that's different from the original. There's... The license board is exactly the same. They just cut it up. And then you have to buy a new ability that allows you to go into another class. BS. 
Uh, yes, and they're both uh, naturally attuned to white magic. Um, we want swiftness. We want to be able to attack more quickly with our bows and arrows. Althir needs five more. When I saw that they had split the license grid up initially, my thought was my hope was that they actually had separated them, like legitimately separated them. And that once you completed one, then maybe you could go to like a two. Or, at best, a third. But, I already know what I'm going to find once I start completing more and more of these, is that I can get everything. Just like in the original Final Fantasy XII, meaning they changed Jack. So, now that this area is raining, the enemies, all of them, are way more powerful. And, subsequently, drop, uh, have better experience drops. Which is nice. Also, it changes the geography a little bit. <clears throat> in that some areas uh, get overgrown that you could go to before. Some areas um, are blocked off because of, because of the waters. So... It's, it's just a nice little touch. It doesn't change, like, you know, it doesn't change the world or anything, but... Hey, great tortoise. Let's go. Oh, we... Got really lucky. With our assassin's dagger. Because I'm not sure that we would actually have been able to, like, legit fight our way through that guy. That was a lot of hit points that we would have had to get through. Gigantoid. Gigantoid? Not gigantoid. That's a little disappointing. But ultimately, even though it changes the geography up and changes the enemies up a little bit, it's the same kind of area. And for the most part, the same enemies are here. Although I remember having to farm horns for something. So probably something dumb. Because that's usually what you have to farm, like, base level stuff for. Is some... Some dumb, bizarre thing. Getting a lot more gill out here, though. Alright, so that was all the threatening monsters. Will the Cluckatrice be here? Or do we have to kill everything? And did we actually even get everything? I don't think we did. Because we didn't... Oh! The great tortoise came back. That was very fast. Oh, we're doing a lot of damage to this guy. Are you sure he's got 3,000? Yeah, alright. And he's got Flash, huh? Oh, that's a shame. Oh, well. The dry season's not that far off. Oh, 
god, by the time we get around to fighting the... Uh, the Cluckatrice... We're gonna kill it in a single shot. Oh, Chronos Tears. Can always use more Chronos Tears. Hey there, Gigantoid. I know that's not your name, but that's what I'm going to call you from now on. So, no, this isn't one. I thought there was a couple of areas where, like, some of the dry logs and whatnot got lifted up and became bridges. That might be for deeper in. We also need to go to the village um, for a couple reasons. One, we need to get a mark th uh, signified there. As well as see if they have anything new for sale. You never know. Come on, Assassin's Dagger. I was really hoping you could, like, legit kill some things for me. Ooh. That hurt. Oh god. That thing is totally gonna murder us. Well, now that we've almost died to an enemy, and Fran did die, that was, that was fun. What have we learned? Rather, what, what have I learned? Don't mess with elementals. That, that's what I have learned today. Whenever I see a neutral elemental, we leave it alone. It's as simple as that. And then we drink our coffee and go fight some, some giant toads. Our cold coffee. Oh well. It's not that bad cold. A woolly gator. Yeah. This guy, if I recall correctly, has some good drops. And then I say that, and he gives me a pebble. Berserk? Why, why would you cast Berserk on it, precious? So that it can't heal itself? Using Angel Song? Yeah. That's the only thing that I can think of. There's another woolly gator. Alright. Well, let's just make our way to the village. And then once we get to the village, we can push on with what we're actually supposed to be doing, which I don't even remember. TBH. I remember we have to go through here to... Whatever the area is, this past Kisa Plains. Hey there, Mr. Woolly Mammoth. With your weird eyes. Like... What kind of evolution creates a monster like that? I mean, like, to be fair, this world is not exactly the most scientific in terms of biological sense. But that one is particularly odd.
The ring. The precious ring. Gone. Eaten. Eaten by a crocodile. The ring. Her ring. Find it. Bring it here. The creature. Near a bridge. Uh, oh, oh. Can you be a bit more specific? On uh, what you mean by near a bridge. Ooh, we got regen. Well, this is perfect. I forgot everyone's leaving the village during the rains. I'm blundering fool, Kupo. What's that? A sad looking man, Kupo. Haven't seen anyone matching that description around here. Really? Because he's just. Right over there. There's a griff village out on the west end of the plains. Mind yourself if you head that way, though. The creatures there are murder. <clears throat> Unlike the other creatures, which are trying to kill me. Alright. <clears throat> if you say so. Hey, wicked. Welcome back. So, where are we supposed to be going? Nomad Village, North Bank. Fantastic. How you doing, man? So, we need to get there. We're gonna kill these wolves and then we'll turn around and head back south. At least I think of that south? I. These maps, man, they don't. Like, they tell you where you are and where you need to go, but. In terms of the cardinal directions, they're not that good. Ah. Congrats, man. So, we need to go over here and cross the bridge, which we may get attacked by a monster that we may or may not be able to beat. And we will probably be able to beat it. Hey. Look at that. There it is. Hey, you know what? Let's do a thing. I like things. Got a surprise for you. Here goes. Doing the thing. Ooh, Evanescence. Now we get a band. I... So is she Wonder Woman there? <laughs> Like, a lot of these abilities are pretty abstract. I'm not going to lie. But, uh, Evanescence is even more of an abstract ability than most. Maybe that's why I like Balthier's abilities. His mist, his mist powers. They're bits? all pretty straightforward on what he's doing. He's summoning meteors. He's shooting cannons. He's summoning a tidal wave. Fran just punches things real hard. Got a surprise for you. But yeah, a lot of these are just really abstract, and I don't get why. Ooh, a couple of whip kicks. Nice.
if I remember correctly, one of Ashes as she summons a ball of lightning, which is kind of awesome. I'm down with a giant ball of lightning. How about some of this? I don't remember most of Bosch's. Got a surprise for you. Oh, oh well. What did we get? 13? 13 sounds good. Wow. Still didn't get him. Hey, Fran. You need some help now. So we're going to bring Bosch and Balthier in. And of course, Balthier being the leading man will become the leader. Well, I'm glad we were able to take care of that. Now if only I could figure out my way back. I mean, was there ever any doubt? How could I possibly fail at something in a Final Fantasy game? It's not like I don't fail constantly at these games. Because I tend to overreach during stream. Nope, we're just gonna swing right past the giant elemental creature that totally will whip our ass. And go and turn in. <clears throat> That's the ring. At long last, it's found. <clears throat> okay. The crocodile. You've, you've defeated it? There's some good money. Please. I beg you, the ring. The ring of the toad. Take it to my beloved. Go. I, I grow weak. So cold. So cold. Uh, oh, okay. What? If this man is dying of hypothermia, perhaps... Perhaps we should get him a blanket. Very nice. No. We do all of our fighting away from the giant electric ball. Was that a satin finish that you got on him? Because that's what it looks like from the pictures. So I still think we need to get that man a blanket. But. And maybe uh, a fire. Oh, I asked if you uh, got them with a satin finish. 
or on a semi-gloss paper. Because that's what it looks like. It's a good choice. I've always liked semi-gloss. Especially way over glossy. Way too many people get glossy business cards. A word of advice from someone who used to make business cards for other people for a living. Don't get glossy. Get either a semi-gloss or a matte finish. You'll thank me every time. Also, if you go through a professional printer, try to get raised lettering. It's more expensive, I know, but it really pops. I don't know. I mean, there are certainly some type of business cards where I would do glossy. The problem is with glossy, you lose a lot of... Um, other options. Because it has to have that glossy coat over the whole thing. So you can't do, like, raised lettering. You can't do textured cards. You can't use... Um, a lot of paper. There's a lot of papers out there that you can't use. Hmm. We can't fight this thing, apparently. Alright, well, Pinello, it looks like you're coming back in for Balthier. Oh, I didn't mean to fight the bunny. No! We killed a bunny! Good job, uh, Pinello. Um, I would get glossy for if you had a business with tons of employees and you were providing each employee with business cards, personal business cards just for them, I would do glossy. And the reason I would do glossy is because they slide in and out of card holders easier. And so, especially if you've got, like, traveling salespeople or something like that, it can help. It can help them look less like a fool. But if you are running your own business, or um, how are printing, like, calling cards, or anything like that, semi-gloss, or uh, matte with raised lettering. Every time. Woo! That guy was rough. Um, one thing that we used to do, because we used to just experiment with all sorts of stuff to try and... Because uh, I worked at an office depot, so we didn't have the full capabilities at our store. But some we would experiment... Uh, with, like, test stocks or whatever. Um, and one of the things that we found out is they... There is paper out there that you can buy. It's just on any shelf at any... Um, any store that sells nice paper. Um, it's pearlescent or uh, opalescent paper. It's not as thick as standard business cards thicknesses so you have to be kind of careful with it that way but what you do is you print it out on this paper you, you, you print out your business card with just like minimal 
minimal bleeds, not really a whole lot going on. Um, and then the key to this is laminate it. And sure, you can't do a whole lot of options. In fact, you actually lose even more options because like heavy, heavy colors or a lot of saturation color uh, doesn't work as well on this. But um, it looks slick and no one else is doing it. They fall apart a little bit easier because what you want to do is you want to laminate the whole sheet. That way the lamination before before cutting, that way the business cards don't have a, um, a beveled area around them of just lamination. Uh, which means that uh, the lamination isn't stuck on quite as well because it's not completely sealing. But, especially for, like, temporary business cards or, like, invitations. Something that you're only going to give out, like, once or twice. It's real nice. Hey, buddy. So we've been given a lot of freedom at this point. In fact, I don't even, like I remember we were supposed to go through this, but I don't remember if there's anything here that specifically that we were looking for. Um, we were kind of given A just kind of direction and told go so that's what we're doing and hopefully we go to where we're supposed to ah yes 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 this is actually where we were supposed to go holy F we made it on accident Hey there, buddy. Yes, please. He's a Moogle of Honor. And Jahara. Thank you. I know I won't regret it. Awesome. Hey, Jeref Warrior. Who are you? This is Jeref Land. No place for a Hume Child to play, to play at games. They are wayfarers. They bring no harm. I saw them cross the Osman Plains. They are warriors of great distinction. The fiends of the plains trouble them not at all. Well, I mean, they troubled us a little bit. You ventured upon the plains alone, War Chief. Again? <laughs> what business have you with the Jarif? Let them pass. The responsibility will be mine. Yay! We're opening relations! Then you may pass. These days, see many Humes wandering through our lands. Opening positive relations between other cultures. Ah, I have not made introductions. I'm Sup Supinlu? Supenalu? War chief of this village. We giraffe have been friends, uh... We giraffe have been friends to all since long ago, however... Lately, the Hume world is in so much turmoil. Alright, man. Have a good one. 
we must protect our village and our people. As war chief and protector of our village, I ask why you come to this land. Well, you see... Hmm. I see. So you two have come to ask about the Nethesite. You must speak with the elders. Though our masks may make it difficult for you to tell us apart, walk through the village and look with your eyes. Listen with your ears. Okay. I will look with my eyes and listen with my ears. Not the other way around. Another human visitor to our land? This is most unusual. Have you two come to speak to the elder chieftains? Indeed I have, good sir. Who is this other human you keep talking about? Oh. What is this? More human come to visit us? A little bigger this time, but no matter. You need not tell me anything. I know you have come to our village to learn of the stones. The Nethesite. We, Jeref, have knowledge of this. Passed down from father to son, mother to daughter. Some of it remains. Some of us... Uh, some has been lost in history's sands. I know nothing of the stones. You must speak with the great chief. He alone holds deep knowledge of these things. He alone remembers all the tellings. Cross the bridge to the north, and there you will find him. There uh, there are watchers at the bridge, so I think it best you speak to War Chief Supenau. May I ask you for a favor? Give this to War Chief Supenlu for me. Alright. I will definitely give him the Jaya stick. There is no rush. When next you happen to meet him, you may give it to him then. May you find all the answers you seek. A geomancer? Sitting here on the earth, one comes to see many things. The great flow of the worlds, even the flow of man's thoughts. Damn. You get all that from just sitting there. There is wood in the southeast of here, where the mist is uncommonly thick. Even its flowers are perilous to man. If you would pass through the wood, be wary of a place where mist runs thickest. Many people come to our village of late. Perhaps the road of Giza is open? Once again, we can bring medical herbs and the fine cheese uh, of the Nana to the people of Giza. When the rains have lifted, I will do this. Nice! Opening up trade! Ooh. Oh, ho, ho. you, sir. Uh, I like you. You have new weapons for me. I like having new weapons. I uh, only got one turtle shell, eh? That's a shame. Oh well. As you can see, we also gained not an insignificant amount of gill. I mean, not a ton. Ooh, do not want to sell that. An ornate breastplate, shield, and helm. Ooh, we can buy more grimoires. But that will have to wait, because we have a sword that no one can use, a sword that one person can use, ooh, it's a big jump in his, although we lose the ability that the assassin dagger had to sometimes just murder. Hmm. On hit sap. That's not bad. Oh man, we need so much money. Holy F.
Have you heard of the monographs? Merely bearing one of these on your person aids in the retrieval of objects from the foes you defeat. There are different monographs for different per, uh, persuasions of adventurer. As a merchant, I would love one, if only I knew where they might be found. Well, I can tell you. But it's going to cost you. Hmm. Nethesite. Perhaps the great chief knows something. He is across the bridge to the north. I am aware of his position. The high chief has given this to me? I shall receive it. I thank you for bringing it to me. Now, did you learn what you wished? No, do not tell me. It is written clear upon your face. So even the high chief could not help. All right. Yes, it is true. The great chief may know something that would aid you. Yet, arranging an audience may be difficult. Hmm. I don't want to hear that. I must learn more about the Nethesite. I cannot turn back now. Please, tell your great chief that I am the, the royal line of Damasca, a direct descendant of Dynasty King Wraithwall. If, if the Jarif have passed down knowledge of the stones, they must know of the Nethesite that the Dynasty King once held. Do you have proof of your heritage? I... I do not. Hmm. I have looked into your eyes and seen that you speak the truth, human child. I give you my trust. The great chief is ahead, across this bridge. Nice. This is the easiest political wrangling I've ever had to do in a game. There was no, like, bureaucratic... Yes, we will meet with the great chief. I didn't have to, like, wind my way through a bureaucratic mess or... That is an imposing looking mask. Like, wow. That was a lot easier than most games. This there was no. Nethesite. You have used it. There was no. It was not I who used it. Indeed, I had hoped you could show me how. Thus I've come. Fetch quests or anything? Um, you do not know the workings of the stone. Then we are no different. What? In ages past, the gods made a gift of Nethesite to my people. But the manner of its use eluded us. Okay. Displeased by our failure, the gods took back their stones. They chose instead to give them to a Yum king. Called the Dynast King, he used the Nethesite's power to bring peace to a troubled time. But... It is a curious thing. Though the blood of King Wraithwall flowed <coughs> through your veins... It's a very interesting sword. Nethesite. Cannot wield it. So then, am I to understand you can't tell me how to use the stone? Though it shame me so to admit... Here before me stands a descendant of the dynast king himself, and I can accord her no help at all. Still, even if you knew how to use the Nethesite, you would find it of small avail. Interesting. The mist collected in the stone over ages past is lost, and with it, the stone's power. It will be your posterity who will the stone in ages yet to come. <sighs> So we need to take it someplace where there's lots of mist, so it might this regain some of its power. Is devoid of power, empty, yet full of thirst, a terrible longing to drink the world dry. The mm. power of men and of magic, of good and of evil. It is often those who desire Nethesite whom the Nethesite itself desires. Okay. Larsa! Larsa? Of course it was Larsa. They talked about a Hume, a Hume child that was shorter than Vaughn. 
Who else could it have been? It's not like it was going to be some random person who's also interested in Nethesite. To Baromises. I say we ought leave tomorrow. I was going to wait for my escort to return, but meeting you here has presented a great opportunity. This terrible war can Not be so. stopped, but I will need your help to do so. Okay. A war. You know the Marquis Ondor leads a group of insurgents. Your pardon. <laughs> he leads a large resistance force against the Empire. Lady yeah. Ash, neither of our countries can afford this now. The Rosarian Empire would stir. They would aid the resistance and use this aid as a pretext to declare war on Arcadia. And Arcadia would have no choice but to answer. Interesting. Lady Ash, let us go to Bur Omasace. With the blessing of his grace, the Grand Kiltius Anastasis, you may rightly wear your crown and declare the restoration of the Kingdom of Dalmasca. As queen, you can call for peace between the Empire and Dalmasca and stop Marquis Ondor. For peace? How dare you say that? The Empire attacked us, stole all we hold dear, and you would have me save them from war? Dalmasca would be the battlefield. What if Nethesite were used on Rabanasta? You know my brother would do this. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, he would. Forgive me. I presumed over much. I could think of no other way to avoid bloodshed. If you cannot trust me, then please take me as your hostage. That's not what it sounds like. Hostage was a term Rassler. used kind of loosely. You saw him, didn't you? Like at the king's tomb. In, during the Middle Ages. So you did see him too. But why? It's strange. Because you've seen death? Before. Because you've lost someone's I didn't even close? I know what you looked like. And the prince? I barely knew there was a prince. Who knows? Maybe the person I saw was my brother. No. Bosch told me about him. He enlisted right at the end. Rex was awesome. But for what? He knew he couldn't win. To protect something. How can he protect anything when he's dead? Hey. Was it different from Prince Rassler? Did that make sense? No, it didn't make a goddamn lick of sense, but it doesn't always have Hating to. the Empire, getting revenge, it's all I ever thought about. But I never did anything about it. Sometimes you just have to act. I realized there was nothing I could do. It made me feel hollow. Alone. And then, I'd miss my brother. Makes sense. I'd say stuff like, I'm gonna be a sky pirate, or some other stupid thing. Just anything to keep my mind off it. I was just... I was running away. I needed to get away from his death. That's why I followed you. Interesting. You know what? I'm through with it. I'm through running. Give Mick puts a little bit more complexity into Vaughn. To find some real answers. Some reasons. If I stick with you, I think I will. He's still definitely the the audience analog, but I he went from being one-dimensional audience friend. analog to becoming a more fully fledged out like as this game progresses he becomes more and more of a character and not just a piece by which they explain the world Pinello doesn't get afforded that luxury which is a shame All of her storyline is either told through Larsa or through Vaughn. To Mount Baromises. I had hoped you'd say yes. I am glad. My heart is not set. I still have questions. I hope to find answers along the way. I had other reason to invite you. There is someone I'd like you to meet waiting on Baromises. 
Who was that? An <laughs> enemy, and an ally also. You will just have to wait and see for yourself. An enemy and an ally. That Larsa likes his secrets. He does not mean ill by it. No, but he has learned. How's the best way to put this? He has learned that secrets are more valuable than information. Holy Mount Buromi Seis stands at the northern end of the Yagd Ramuda. Once okay. we're in Yagd, we need not fear pursuit by their airships. Don't get your hopes up. You remember the Leviathan sailed straight over the Yacht Yensa, right up to Rathal's tomb. Skystone that works even in Yacht. You know, Nethersite's behind it. Little yeah. wonder they're so keen on the stuff. And what is it you're after, Balthier? You're a welcome hand and a great aid, but why? Worried I'm out to steal the Nethersite, eh? Well, I'm unaccustomed to people doubting my intentions. You are a self-proclaimed sky pirate. Mind. Shall I swear by your sword or some such? <laughs> Apologies, but I needed to know where you stand. Her Majesty depends on you, and you seem to have an interest in the stone. I'm only here to see how the story unfolds. Any self-respecting leading man will do the same. <laughs> All right, now we have Larsa as our guest. So, you will leave? Take this as a token of our parting. Oh -ho. If you would ride a chocobo, you may. I have spoken to the Moogle. She will not charge you for your first use of the chocobos. Take care on the road ahead. Should it lead back to our land, you will be welcome guest. Spirit of the lands watch over you. It's good to know. Kind of a weird guy, but... I'm okay with it. Ooh. It's gonna be heavy as hell. Alright, let's go over our usable accessories. So right now we have Gauntlets, which increases physical attack when HP is critical. Slightly raises max HP. Don't want that. Automatically counter with weapon in hand. That might be really useful. Immune to blind. Half damage on pretty much everything. But on equip, they are silenced. Double LP earned. Well, that's awesome. The Dawn Shard. Magic resist 20, reduce MP to 0. Okay. Double XP earned. Interesting. Uh, enables casting of magics with gill rather than MP. Raises strength when characters at full HP. Leather gorge. When and steel gorge. Oh, reduce physical damage taken. I said that wrong. I said that that was the same as the steel gorge. Um, but we will probably go with a battle harness. So, let's see here. We have a new gun. That I cannot equip yet. Okay. Let's check out our licenses then. Okay. 
So we don't have light armor 6 yet, but we don't need it. But we do need to pick up a lot of accessory stuff. And some of this stuff is going to be coming up before too long. So we need to start picking it up. Alright, so for Vaughn, we'll start with... Hmm. Yeah, we'll start with picking up some accessories. That way he can have a better chance of getting anything that he needs. Balthier. We still don't have any measures. But we need guns three. And what the hell, we'll get guns four. Because then we have one through five. Swords one, two, three. Katana four. Four we can't afford yet. That is a big amount of HP. Alright, Bosch. Where did you start? There we go. Swords one. Shields, armor. Sword, armor, shield, sword. Alright, so we're going to just need to do a lot, a lot of grinding so that we can get people to where they should be as opposed to all of this junk that I've done in terms of exploring their spheres. Grids. They're grids. They're not sphere gr They're not spheres anymore. They're just normal grids now. And she could wear a lot of armor. Apparently armor was the trick up that path. HP was the trick up this path. Attack. Pretty much all the way straight down. Alright, so let's get her a couple more spears. And a couple more pieces of accessories. After all, you got to accessorize. Uh, bow four, bow three. We don't have the long bow yet. Um, she's got light armor through six. So she really just needs accessories. Okay, okay, so we've got some some work to do. We need a lot of money, we need a lot of LP. Um, but we have Larsa with us, so now we are better equipped in terms of just our ability to quickly dispatch enemies. Ooh, some dark magicite. Sounds awesome. All right, let's. All right, fine. Break my chain. So we're going to. Uh, explore all the areas available to us here on the plains. Um, so we'll see how long that takes, how far we get. It almost looks like I should be able to get down there, but I can't. Man, Larsa. 
He's all up in the business today. Okay. Let's go see what that lower path takes us, because that is not... directly referenced on our map here. I mean, it very well might be, because I didn't go over to it and... Ooh, a cave. I wonder if there's wonders in those caves. So, just a second here. Gotta check on... Alright, good. Had to make sure that none of my... IRL friends were in chat. Because... Uh, I had an idea today for a D&D &D campaign. Um, it's kind of a contrived idea overall, but... It's something that I haven't really dealt with uh, much. And so if you're not familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, um, they have a multiverse of their own. Um, and that's what all the different campaign settings are, for the most part. A couple of them take place on the same world, but most campaign settings in Dungeons & Dragons are their own world with their own kind of races and classes and, for lack of a better term theme uh, for instance um, Dragonlance is kind of a generic feeling theme but it definitely uh, like in terms of like medieval fantasy except it has a few other things going on it's got uh, the war of the lances or the war of Oh. Hey, we're back down here. Yeah, I don't want to be here. Um, it's got the... Uh, the... The robe... The wizardry tower... The tower of wizard... Towers of high sorcery and the robed wizards. Um, but overall, it's kind of a catch-all for fantasy tropes. Uh, but then you have um, Forgotten Realms, which for the most part is a catch-all of fantasy themes, except Forgotten Realms is more than just Faerun, the campaign setting that they've decided to keep going with. There's also a Mesoamerican themed one, so like South and Central America, called Mazdaka. There's an Asian-themed setting there uh, called, uh, I think it's Curatao. Don't quote me on that. I never really had any interest in it, so the name never really stuck. And then it has al Qadim, which is my preferred campaign setting, which is Middle Eastern in theme. So, you know, it's full of, like, genies and corsairs and sailing the high seas and whatnot. And that's that's typically what I run. Uh, but the campaign setting that I had the idea for was in... Um, it was in uh, al -Qadim, except the, the idea that I had was that I rip al the the entire landmass that it exists in, out of Forgotten Realms, and that way I can more justifiably, if some, if I later down the road play with somebody who happens to know a lot about it, explain away all the idiosyncrasies in my own world. Is that oh, well, in my camp, in my long-running camp uh, D and D setting, um, it's been ripped from. Forgotten Realm, so you can't just go there and 
find dragons or go into some dungeon that has some item. And I can kind of make up the flavor and change the map to fit my own personal needs. And I, that way I don't have to follow um, some of the stricter things that are in the book because in the books because even though I like to stick to the theme um, a lot of the stuff that are in the books just doesn't age well that's that's the best way I can put it and I could just go with the you know this is I, I could just lay the GM hammer down like well, this isn't blank. Or, I could introduce someone into it who may already know a few things with this little hook that, oh, well, it's not the same because of this event that occurred in some past campaign. Um, and essentially how I'm going to do that is the gods of that world are going to die. Kind of. They're, the gods in Aquadim are not like even other gods in D&D, where the other gods live in their own various realms, like Mount Olympus or whatnot. Um, the gods of Aquadim actually live in Aquadim. They walk the world, they have what appear to be mortal bodies, although they are, in fact, immortal. Um, and the idea being that they're going to lose their divinity through an event um, that is also going to rip Aquadim out of the greater existence, and I can just keep it going my thing. Like, people still worship these these individuals they are still very powerful but they're not really gods anymore they're not omnipotent they don't control everything um, essentially giving the gods more of a limit because you can summon the gods you can like d and a weird thing, man. <laughs> like, running into gods and fighting them is kind of the end game for most D&D campaigns. Uh, or most D&D settings. It's like, oh, so once you've done... Once you've completed all the books, now you go and fight the gods and that you want to fight and you replace them. Because now you're better than them. At least that's kind of like the old school way of thinking about it. Uh, but now it's mostly just like telling small stories and kind of stringing some of those stories together. And thanks to uh, people like Matt Mercer and uh, Ack Inc. and these people who are who are either long-standing GMs who have been, you know, doing it for forty years in some cases. Um, not forty years, thirty years in some cases. There's. There's a, a, what I would call a stiff, uh, a, a, a high bar. That's where we're going. There's a high bar for what it means to be a, a, a dungeon master anymore. But there's also a lot more resources than there ever was, too. Back in the day, you had the books that you could draw inspiration, like just regular old fantasy novels that you could draw inspiration from, as well as the source materials, so the the actual Dungeons and Dragons books themselves. And aside from that, that your friends, 
Except you want your friends in your game, so you don't want to consult them about what's going on in your game. It's good to, that we can fight these werewolves now. That one's going to get paralyzed in a few moments, but he's probably going to die before then. Ooh, did Larsa just level up? Heck yeah. Alright, let's get rid of these Chocobo. And why is there a regular Chocobo right here? Ah, they must be telling me that there's something over here. Is that the whole point of those guys? Is to tell me that there's something over there, but I have to be riding a Chocobo in order to get it? Seems like a kind of a waste to me. I guess this one was a success. Wow, I'm impressed, Bon. I got a good feeling. An alliance between hmm. Damascus and the Empire. I mean, kind of. It is the only course. We must avoid a wasting war with the Empire at all cost. Yet I fear I could not bear the shame. Had I but the strength. A shame, perhaps, for me and for you. But for Dalmasca, it is hope. And you can just accept this, can you? After Vane's ruse, I had abandoned hope for honor. Yet, never did I forget my nightly vows. If I could protect but one person from war's horror, then I would bear any shame. I would bear it proudly. He is a... I could not defend my home. Far too what good a of a person. To me. Uh, person. He is far too dedicated to his knightly vows for any reasonable person. The Empire. They will not accept this. There is hope. All right. Don't encourage Hope him. for a future where we not can join that, hands as brothers. <laughs> Larsa, please. This is serious. Oh. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't be Larsa. Somebody's gotta put him in his place. No, Larsa's, Larsa's the good brother. I don't know who raised Larsa as opposed to Vane, but... The Senate may play at intrigue, but Lord Vane is not one to be brought down easily. The entire military waits upon his orders, from the War Council down to the rank and file. What better blade than he to strike down the enemies of the Empire? Your honor reminds me of Zet two years since. <laughs> he too put his trust in Lord Vane's strength and what became of him. That's a very good question. Trace since also, is it I just me? You malign, judge sect. He was a or does she warrior. look like she has a heartless or symbol do you think on her helmet? Lord Vane, Ill placed. Vane took two of his own brother's lives. He is ruthless beyond contempt. Ruthless, you say? Would he were more so? <laughs> he gives traitors no quarter, be they of his own blood. How fitting for one who would bear the burden of empire. There's something but could we stuck in my Zarkabai, in between my what of you? tooth and gum right Surely here. You do not believe his brothers were traitors. So found His Excellency Lord Gramis. You would do well to mind your tongue, Drace. That matter is long past. How do you see? Your Some of you do not have any vision spots in your helmets. Lord Vane has arrived at the palace. We come at once. Also, since there's no conformity in the helmets, it's Lord Larsa has left very odd. Promises. He hopes to enlist the aid of the Grand Kiltius in stopping the insurgents. I doubt this will be enough to deter Ondor, but even a slight hindrance to his operations would be welcome. This will delay the Rosarian invasion, and we will have bought much needed time to shore up our defenses. Just as His Excellency had hoped. No matter the result, I'm pleased with the young Lord's progress. I can already see the stunned faces of those mud-witted senators. 
The fools think a child emperor's strings easy to pull from the shadows. <laughs> but they will find that Lord Larsa is no puppet. Yeah. Yes, the senators would be most pleased with a puppet for an emperor. Recall, Drace, how the Senate fears and despises Lord Vane's ability. When they realize the truth, that Lord Larsa is no docile lamb to be shepherded, they will bare their teeth and devour him. Will they? You're right. I shall speak on this matter with His Excellency at once. Gabranth, it falls to us to protect Lord Larsa. Are we agreed? Aye. Interesting. I mean, it was very clear that there were... The, the brothers are effectively two factions within the Empire, but... It's interesting just how... Different... We tried passing through Golmore, Galmore Jungle, but we encountered some sort of barrier. We could go no further. There must be a way through. Like, the dichotomy within the Empire is so... obvious. It's amazing that there's not already a civil war. All right, Goldmore Jungle. This is a rough area. Because this is where we first get our taste of Corel. Uh, this is also where we, if I remember correctly, where we get our first taste of uh, Marlboro. And any area that has Marlboro is rough. I want to say they're rare. And it's not until later on in it, but... They're here. Could have been bad. Oh, there they are. Cloying breath. Alright, well that's not nearly so bad. Well, these guys aren't as bad as I recall. I must be misremembering parts of this area then. Because I recall the Marlboros being... Like, devastating. Got a map? Awesome. A free map? Love free maps. That's not really true. Also, a Marlboro that's susceptible to, to to petrify? What is this nonsense? What the hell's going on here? Come on, friend. Please wake up soon. There she is. Yeah, I'll go ahead and leave that item behind. We don't need to go anywhere but right here. Also, Larsa had better not be pulling from my own item stores. Okay. So, we're about to get petrified. That's not okay, in my book anyway. So.
Are we caught up? Do we have all the ones that we're supposed to have yet? Brawler increases attack power when fighting empty handed. Interesting. That f I feel like that should be with Monk, but alright. Yeah, we'll take a battle lore. Guns four, guns five, guns six. We don't need to worry about armor. Five is still beyond what we can use. We've got up to measures three. No, we don't. Now we have up to measures three, even though we don't have anything to go, you know, along with it. We don't have any measures to use. It's better to be ahead of the curve whenever possible. Okay. Alright, so now we've got armor up through seven. Can't get yet can't yet get weapon four for katanas, but that's not so that's not so bad. Fifty, huh? Is there anything conveniently 50 that we have access to. Oh, yeah, right here. There we go. Sword, sword, sword. There we go. Hey, look at that. We now even have our next level of sword up. Lady Ash needs a lot of accessories. After all, she is a princess. Actually, I shouldn't even say that. After all, she thinks highly of herself. And what I have found... Not... I mean, it's not a flawless bit of logic but it is a lot of people that think extremely highly of themselves tend to like accessorizing I don't know if there's anything to that or not but in my experience of the of the few people that I know that think highly of themselves they like to accessorize huh well Pinello, you are actually fairly well-rounded here. Better than most of my team. So... Magic lore... Remedy, potion... Let's get more potion lore. Let's make those potions do some work. All right. And that flame tongue looks awesome. I'm not going to lie. Just a tad bit jealous of how awesome that sword looks. And soon enough, we will have all the money in the world. All of it will be ours. And we're not sharing. Do we look like the kind of people who would share? We have a pirate and a wannabe pirate. We're not sharing. 
Hey, gargoyles. Thankfully, you're not Dark Souls gargoyles. Because that would be really shit. Actually, I'm not sure if we could kill Dark Souls, Dark Souls gargoyles. Actually, what the hell am I saying? Of course we could. We kill creatures way bigger than Dark Souls gargoyles. We kill creatures that plan on ending worlds. Like sorceresses. Oh, sorry. Let's, let's start from the beginning. Like death. Or an emperor. Or an amorphous darkness. Or death. Or a tree. Or a jester turned magical general. Uh, an alien. Um, an ancient sorceress. An alien. And then death. Our dad, and then <laughs> an evil summoner. Actually, not even really evil. I mean, I wouldn't call you Yevon evil. He was just different. You know? Just, just a little bit different. Dude, did Larsa get... Wow, yeah, Larsa got messed up by something. Oh, you son of a... go. Come on, people. Kill the horrible plant monster. Hey, do I happen by chance to have... Well, I've got rays, but... What about a golden needle? Yeah, there we go. Everything else is fine, but we needed to deal with that. Good work. Ooh, mage's hat. Also, am I the only one that thinks it's slightly odd that a samurai is wearing mage's gear? Typically, when you think samurai, you don't think, like, pointy hats and cloaks. What is it? The jungle denies us our passage. What have we done? We? No. I. Um. What's that mean? How are we supposed to get through that? Making an appearance. Come on, I'm um, talking over here. I thought you were all for good. <laughs> hey. Our choices are few. Friend? Both here! This is as much for you ah. as it is me. Oh? You are ill at ease. The Nethersite troubles you. You've let your eyes betray your heart. <laughs> right. What are you doing? 
Soon you will learn. There's more than meets the eye. We go to seek aid of the Viera who dwell ahead. Interesting. I bet they'll be glad to see you after so long. <laughs> I am unwelcome, an unsought guest in their wood. Yep. She's an outcast. And it's certainly not for dressing like that. Hey, Mr. Trent. Uh, we're gonna mess you up. And it's gonna be pretty bad, actually. Same thing with you. Ooh, try attack. Wait. How can one Trent do try attack? Hmm. I'm sensing a problem here. Now, if you were to tell me that any enemy that there's three of can do try attack, I would actually not bat an eye at that, because that makes perfect goddamn sense. Get the gargoyle first, please. All right, fine, fine. I guess I would have had to gone and individually choose each person to go and fight gargoyles. Oh, hey, Larsa was able to take a Marlboro all by himself. Good job, kid. I'm not sure any of our other teammates could take a single a, gar, uh, a Marlboro all by themselves. Not yet, anyway. Soon enough, but not yet. We've got a lot of money in our hands. But... Do we have enough time on the clock to go back there? Yeah, I think so. I'll go ahead and save and head on back. So, how far would you say we are in the game? A quarter? An eighth? This, I recall this being a long game, but then again, I also recall the other games being long, and we certainly beat them a lot faster than we probably, or rather, than I normally would. I was trying to get it like a rough estimate on where we think we'll be. Like how far into the year will we be when we finish this game? Mid-March? Do you think we'll be that far in? I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. There's a lot to do in this game. And I don't really remember how far we are in. I don't think we're very far. So that's kind of hopeful that there's a whole lot more to do. But... We'll just have to see. That's all that really comes of it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. But I was also thinking that Final Fantasy X would be a lot longer. Actually, I was expecting them all to take after 8. Took us an entire month. I was expecting them all to take us about a month, but... 9 took us, like two weeks. You no, know, about three weeks. Ten took us about three weeks. Actually, no. Eight took us longer than a month, because it was 28 episodes.
That's like a month and a half. Uh, I tend to do a little bit of grinding uh, between episodes, but not a whole lot. I tend to do most of my grinding on the weekends because I can just sit down and play without having to worry about, like, what time do I have to go to bed to, to get up in time for work and anything like that. So I can normally get about... Mm, four or five hours in on a weekend without any worry. Um, if I want to go hard on it, I can get... If I really want to go hard on it, I could go like 20 hours of grinding on the weekend, but... That... Takes a lot of dedication, and though I have the dedication, I'm starting after... 11 of these games to get a little burned out on them. Uh, 9 and this one, though, have been like a breath of fresh air. Um, because, one, because I love 9 so much. And two, because this one is so different from other Final Fantasy games that it's not the same well, it's just not the same that's, that's about the best way I can put that We're getting a lot of these single-use items. Maybe I should start selling them just because... Well, if you've watched for longer than a single game, you'll know that I don't really use single-use combat items. Not that they're bad. In fact, if you're lacking in some area especially in magics, those single-use combat items can save your bacon more than a few times. Hey, man. Yep. You are back. And we're just headed to uh, go and sell a bunch of stuff and re-equip our characters before calling it a night. We've got a fair few Geshel Greens. Maybe we should get on the Chocobo starting tomorrow's episode and just run around. <laughs> okay. Well, if we discount the the grinding time that I do on the weekends, because I think I did about five hours-ish of grinding. So we're at about 15 of gameplay. Um, if we count some of that grinding in, 17, 18 hours, roughly speaking. So, yeah, we're talking about another, like, three weeks, I would say. Including this week. So, another two more weeks after this one. I, when I play, th usually when I play through them, I take forever. On purpose. 
because I don't want any stone unturned. If by speed you mean exceptionally slow, then yes. Ooh. Making some money. I mean, slow is a speed. Um, now that, okay, so we're going to get five princess kisses and five tufts of phoenix. How am I doing on those? Tough to Phoenix, that's fine. Where's our Prince Kisses? Prince's Kiss 25, yeah, that's fine. Uh, red cap and matching armor. The color softens and glows richer with wear. Alright, so we still need a longbow. Ah. And a crossbow armor. All right, we got three people that can use berets. Three people that can use survival vests. And we're pretty much out of money. No new ammo yet. Come on, guys. No new ammo for our bows yet. Killer bow has nothing special going on for it. That's a little disappointing. So the main gosh. What's gone? Oh, money. <laughs> yep. So the assassin's dagger on hit KO. Like that's really powerful. One hit sap. That's not actually that good. So that on hit KO is really nice. It some of those like when we first fought, uh, like it can change some battles, but it's not consistently doing damage and it's not consistently using that ability. So do you really want to? test your luck on that one i don't anyway that is going to be it for us tonight i want to thank everyone for coming by and hanging out with me i especially want to thank those that participated in chat uh wicked twan twan uh jack daniels thank you guys very much and hey i did not forget you you two until just now didn't participate in chat thank you mr henry um, before we go, I would like to remind you guys that, uh, we are partners with Humble and they just started a huge Ubisoft sale. Um, a significant number of the Assassin's Creed's are on there. A significant number of the Far Cry's are on there. I know I'm personally going to be taking advantage of this to bolster our list of games for future retrospectives. Um, especially on those Assassin's Creed and Far Cry's. Uh, but it, there's a whole lot going on. So if you use our affiliate link that I just posted into chat, that will get you right to the store. You can buy your games, sign up for Humble Bundle or Humble Monthly. Um, you support awesome charities. You get yourself a bunch of awesome games. And you support the channel a little bit. Uh, oh, almost forgot uh, to also 
give another awesome shout out to Jack Daniels for the follow. Thank you very much, sir. Um, you have put us one step closer towards that amazing goal of 50. Um, again, thank you guys very much. Hope you have a wonderful night and will join me tomorrow where, we'll, where we will continue. Um, <laughs> where we will continue with Final Fantasy 12. 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Time. Have a wonderful night, guys. See you tomorrow.